an IFBB pro who doesn't know how to teach proper form. So before we jump into today's episode of Insta Garbage, I'd like to know down in the comment section below how many of you go to the gym and train your abs and your obliques. Just go down right now and leave a comment. And now I have another question. How many of you guys go to the gym and you don't train your abs or obliques because you've been told that if you train those muscle groups, it's going to make your waist bigger and that's the last thing that you want, right? Like we go to the gym because we want to get in shape, we want to get lean, we want to lose body fat. But if you start training your abs and you start training your obliques, all of a sudden your pants aren't going to fit because your waist grew six inches. Like these are things that are actually said. And the fact that it's being said by an IFBB pro really bothers me. And I guess when it comes to women who train in the gym, maybe they're a bit more conscientious about their waist than guys are. Like guys are more, I guess, you know, focused on getting their upper body super big where women, they want big butts, but they want a super tiny waist because they want the hourglass look, and that's fine. But listen, doing abdominal exercises and oblique exercises isn't going to make your waist bigger. If anything, it's going to help make it tighter because you're strengthening the muscles in your core. So this is a video from Claire Morrow, okay? She actually has two videos, so we're going to watch both of them really quick. One of them talking about the wood chopper, another one showing the standing oblique crunch. Two of my favorite exercises, by the way, for training obliques. So let's watch the first video right now. When you see someone doing an exercise that can make their waist thicker, first of all, I've never seen anyone do a wood chopper like that unless they were doing it wrong and I had to go over and help them. So I don't know if she's trying to be funny in the video or if this is really how they think you're supposed to do that exercise, but that could also be a reason why they're spreading misinformation because they don't understand the mechanics of the wood chopper. Just because you're an IFBB pro doesn't mean you know every single thing about exercise. I mean, just because I'm a YouTuber with over 2.5 million subscribers doesn't mean I know everything either, but I'm not sitting here trying to spread misinformation on something that's already been proven to be a myth, okay? And now here's a second video. Again, when you see someone doing an exercise that will make their waist thicker. And granted, oh, who's she catering to? Her audience is women. So women are gonna see this and they're gonna stay away from ab exercises even more, right? Talking about your waist, talking about your big butt, these are topics that women talk about mostly in their videos for views because that's what women want to see. And I get that, but don't spread misinformation. So these are the two movements, guys. Let me just explain something. The only reason why your waist is going to get bigger, there's three reasons actually. Number one, you get fat, okay? You don't watch your diet, you don't exercise, you put on body fat, you get fat, your waist gets bigger. Number two, you're on PEDs, okay? You're on performance enhancing drugs and your organs are actually getting bigger and you're getting to what some call roid gut. And if you've ever watched the Mr. Olympia shows, you can see that these guys' stomachs, as tight as they look when they're flexed, when they're not flexing, they're protruding way out because the organs inside are getting bigger and they're pushing everything forward. And the third reason is this the simple fact that you're not training your core, so you're getting a bit of a distended belly because those muscles are no longer strong enough to hold everything in. And I'm gonna show you guys at the end of this video an exercise that will help you draw your core back in and keep things nice and tight. But first things first, let's go over to the wood chopper and fix the terrible form that her friend was showing in that video. All right, so for the exercise in the first video I showed you, she was doing the wood chopper. And I not only want to show you proper form here, but I want to show you a couple variations just so you can switch up your workouts. Like when we train any other body part, we do similar movement patterns, but we try to hit the muscles from different angles. Why? To find weakness and eliminate it and be as strong as we can. No different for the core. But in her video, her friend was doing the exercise and she had the cable way too high and was pulling it down like this. Granted, I don't know if it was to be funny in the video. Maybe we'll give her the benefit of the doubt, but this is wrong. If you're doing a high to low wood chopper, first of all, you bring that cable down to about head height. Because any higher than this, you're bringing your shoulders up like that and it's uncomfortable, it makes no sense. Interlock your fingers, take your feet, point them away from the cable machine, try to keep your hips pointed away from the cable machine and have your head pointed away as well. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create <laughs> tension through your midsection as you come down and then especially as you come back like this. There's no need to turn and face the machine because as soon as you turn and face the machine, 
You're taking all that tension out of your core, and then you're going to have to restart it again. It's going to be kind of awkward. Just keep the tension there the entire time by coming back like this. So that's a high to low. If you guys want to do a low to high, bring the cable all the way down. But for this one, there is a bit of pivoting that you're going to do with your feet to maximize the efficiency of the exercise. So you're actually going to stat out, hands in the same position, elbows locked out, feet facing the cable. And you're going to get into a low position, twist and turn. See my feet twisting? Twist and come up like this. This is actually the hottest variation in my opinion. And you're going to feel this through your core in ways you've probably never trained your core before. So I actually recommend trying this over the other two variations if you've never done it before. And then the middle version, which you probably see the most in the gym, granted you probably rarely ever see anyone doing a wood chopper in the gym. And not because they think their waist is going to get bigger. In my opinion, I just think people don't like training abs in general and then especially obliques, right? But for the middle variation, get that cable pulley about hip height. And remember, you want it hip height because you're going to be bending your knees. And when you bend your knees, now it's torso height, right? So hip height, lock out your hands. And for this one, you're going to use the same technique with your feet that you did for the high to low. Point your feet away from the machine, straighten out your arms, point your hips away, point your head away, swing through, come back, swing through, come back. And that's how you do a wood chopper. Now let's go and do the side oblique crunch. All right, so the exercise in the second video was a standing oblique crunch. And if you ever see a trainer teaching you how to do this exercise with weight in each hand and they start going like this, just like say politely, thank you, I'm all set, and just walk away because they don't know what the heck they're doing. If you understand the reason why you're doing this exercise, it makes a lot of sense as to why holding a plate in each hand makes no sense because the entire purpose of doing the standing oblique crunch is to position yourself so that you can come down like this and maximize the stretch and then maximize the flex or muscle contraction on your way back to the other side. And you do this on every single rep. If you're holding equal weight in each hand, that weight is going to help you come down on this side and then come down on that side versus using all of the muscles and contracting them as hard as you can to perform the action of crunching to the side. So don't think that like you're doing the exercise faster by doing both at the same time. You're actually just making the exercise not as effective, okay? And there's one more exercise that I want to show you and this relates to uh, the distended belly that I talked about and there's a movement that you can do at home, at the gym, before bed, in the shower. You can even do it while you're driving. That's going to help you tighten up your waist. If in fact you've noticed that over time your waist isn't as small as it used to be. And we're going to show you that right now. So let's go over here. But before I show you guys this final exercise to help you if you have a bit of a distended belly, I do want to make one thing very, very clear. Exercises like the wood chopper and the standing oblique crunch, these have been in my workout programs for the better part of 20 years. And I use a lot of weight with these exercises, probably more, than, more weight than 90% of the people I see doing these exercises in the gym. And I've been able to maintain a 30, 31 inch waist my entire life. And again, part of the reason is I'm natural, so I haven't taken any PEDs to help increase the size of my organs, and my organs aren't pushing things forward. And number two, I do stomach vacuums to help me maintain that slim waist look that I want. What happens over time as you get older, just because you get more busy, you're sitting down more, you're not as active as you used to be, you're not flexing your core as much, you're not training your core as much, and if you have a desk job, I guarantee when you sit down to work on your computer, as soon as you sit, you're not thinking about keeping this tight. And over time, it just get, the transverse abdominis just gets weaker and weaker, and things start to move forward. So, a lot of you might actually have a much slimmer waist than you really think. But the reason why it's sticking out so far is because the transverse abdominus is weak and the stomach vacuum is a movement that you can do to strengthen it right now. And like I said, you can do it anywhere. You can do it while driving. All right, so maybe Ricky's editing did bring up a little concern around the do it while driving. Let me just be clear if I do that. 
It's like on a long road trip when I'm driving straight on the highway, there's no one around me, and I'm just literally going forward. I'll be sitting in my seat and I'll do some stomach vacuums. Don't do it in traffic, obviously. Come on, guys. You can do it while in the shower, you can do it at the gym, you can do it at home while watching TV, because all you're doing is breathing all of the air out of your system and drawing in your stomach and holding that position for as long as you can. So this is what it looks like. Take a breath in, breathe it all out, and then suck your stomach in. And the goal is to hold that drawn in stomach for as long as you can, and then repeat that for sets. Well, there's no really reps because it's time, but repeat that for as many sets as you can. And as you get better over time, you'll be able to draw your stomach in more and more and hold it for longer periods of time. For me, I try to do like five or six sets in a row and hold it for as long as I can. Then as you get really good, you'll be able to do funky things where you can actually pump your stomach in and out, which looks kind of weird. There's people out there that can do it, do it way more creepier than I can, but I'll, I'll show you the, right now on camera. Draw the breath in. so quiet when I do that. But as you can see, you start to gain more core control. You can start to control those muscles. So let's wrap this video up. Put this myth to bed. If you do wood choppers and you do standing oblique crunches, is it going to make your waist bigger? No. If anything, it'll make it stronger and over time slimmer because those muscles are getting stronger and they're holding everything together. If you get fat, will your waist get bigger? Yes. If you're on PEDs and your organs grow, will your waist get bigger? Yes. If you don't train your abs and your transverse abdominus gets weak over time because you don't keep your core tight, will your waist get bigger? Yes. Those are the reasons. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you go down, tap that like button, subscribe. And if you see any more garbage on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, just shoot me a DM on Instagram, Scott Herman Fitness, and I'll probably feature it in a future video. I'll see you guys next time.